Hello class, this is the replacement video for 3-5. Now 3-5 in the textbook is so easy. It's just saying, hey, let's use radians everywhere that we've been doing degrees. So that's not anything that you have to worry about. We will practice that, we'll have problems in class. It's not anything that's super stressful or anything that I have to teach you. What instead I would like to try to do today is let's have a video that you go watch about Fruit Ninjas. Okay, so go check that out and we'll come back here in just a gif. Alright, so you may be wondering, okay, that was a cute college humor type video or something like that. Why are we watching Fruit Ninja videos in math class? One of the techniques that I want you to remember, so the Fruit Ninja slices are a, a mental hook you know I like these. These little ways to remember what do I do in this kind of problem. So what we're talking about here is how can we solve an equation on the unit circle where somebody says something like sine x equals a half. Okay? So what you've got to think when somebody says sine, what is sine? Sine is y on the unit circle. So the whole point here is that anytime you see this word sine, it's connected with the y values on the unit circle. So remember, y is up and down. So the question is, where on the unit circle is my y value 1? So just so you remember the scale, up there is 1, 0, negative 1. Where do the halves occur? Well, we can see that the line is going to be something right there. And there is some angle that we must have turned to get up to uh, a y value of 1 half. Now, this is assuming that you've internalized the unit circle. You really need to be working on that. Otherwise, you're going to not be as fluent as you need to be to, to do trig, to do calculus. You just need these. They're like, why do we memorize the times table? Because rather than going, what's 5 times 10? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. See how obnoxious that was? You're like, it's 50. What are you doing, Murph? Same thing. Somebody says to you, when is sign half? But bing, you got to be ready with 30 degrees. Okay, so. Then, now what we're working on is getting that into radians. So you say, okay, over here was pi. Uh, that's the sort of default thing. That if you get nothing else about radians, you gotta remember 180 is pi. So now uh, 30 is where you've cut that into six pieces. So that means that this 30 degrees is the same as pi over six. Okay, so now, you can see here from the diagram, not only is it true right there, but it must also be true over there, that there's another angle that I could turn. And obviously, because this is all on the unit circle, everything is symmetric, you can see that you just turn left, right, and, and you get that same uh, stuff uh, over there. So this this idea of reflection left, right, reference angles will help you a lot. That this, this 30 degree over here must be a 30 degree in there, but we're going back from 180. We're going back 30, or we're going back from pi, pi over 6. What is pi uh, over 6? Let me say that again. What is pi minus pi over 6? Well, we need to be in this you know, common denominator. So 6, 6 is 1, so that's 5. Uh, pi over 6. So the two answers that uh, we would want would be pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. But the problem is when the original thing here, I didn't say uh, something like, you know, only uh, restrict your answer from 0 to 2 pi or something like that. I didn't give any restrictions. So we have to be able to answer for all possibilities. So not only could you have turned 30 degrees, but you could have turned 360 plus 30, or 720 plus 30, or any number of full turns. So 360 is the degree version of saying a full turn. What's the radian way of saying a full turn? 2 pi. So what we're saying is that you could have turned 2 pi 
or any multiple of 2 pi that you could have turned 4 pi or 6 pi or 8 pi or negative 8 pi. But that this uh, multiple thing is said with the k, and we need that for both our answers. Okay? So these kinds of answers where you say, I find where it happens on the unit circle, and I just add spins, this is something that we're going to get used to more and more. Now, we just did that for sine, a y value, a consistent y value. That is Fruit Ninja slice style number one, when you slice like this. Now, as a Fruit Ninja, you might also slice like that. What's this? What kind of line is that? Well, it's a line where you've got a consistent x value, where your x value doesn't change, and that is cosine. That if somebody says, when is cosine x equal to negative 1, then you're needing to draw a, a consistent x value. So, so unit circle, and where is my x value equal to negative 1? Well, that happens over there. So you've got sine fruit ninja slices like this, cosine fruit ninja slices like that. So over there, that's uh, 180, which, how many radians is that? It's pi. So we're saying now that x equals pi, and you could go around and do a spin all the way around however many times you like. So plus 2 pi k. So this brings up another point. If you ever get um, a sine or a cosine at 1 or negative 1, when you're slicing like this or like this or like this or like what we just did, then you're only going to get one answer. But the rest of the, the, those four corners of the unit circle. But for any other slice you do, you're always going to get two answers. So that's consistently the, the, the pattern that we see. Only at the corners do you get one answer, but otherwise you always get two answers. So, pattern number one. Sine slices go this way, cosine slices go this way. What's left? Tangent slices. When does uh, tangent, so let's say uh, tan x equals negative one. So we said that cosine is x, sine is y, tangent is slope. So on my Fruit Ninja unit circle here, I need to say when is my slope equal to negative 1. So a slope slice goes through the origin, right? That that's a, a line with a particular slope, y equals mx, that that's some kind of slope goes through the origin every time. For Cos, we had a consistent x value. For sine, we had a consistent y value. For tangent, we need to have a consistent slope. So there's a slope of 1, but that's not what we asked for. We asked for a slope of negative 1. So my fruit ninja slice needs to go that way. So I need this there and that there. So a slice of 1, the reason I wanted to do that, that's, that's the easiest one to be able to do, that we've got rise over run being equal to each other. The rise and the run are equal to each other. We've turned 45 degrees, which is how many radians? Pi over 4. So now we need to be able to have pi over 4 that we've backed up from pi. So we went back 45 degrees from 180. We went back pi over 4 from pi, that's 3 pi over 4. Now, remember what we said about tangent, that its pattern loops more often than sine or cosine. That sine and cosine take 360 degrees, but that since we're just talking about slope, that repeats every 180. So in radians, that's every pi. So you can see here what I mean, that this angle that we turned over there, that this angle that we turned over there, you could do it again there, and again there, and again there, that this, this Fruit Ninja slice repeats every pi. So it is technically true that if you wanted to do 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4, both of them plus 2 pi k plus 2 pi k, that is technically true. But it's a waste, 
why say that the pattern repeats every two pi when there's an easier pattern that repeats every pi? So all we have to say for tangent is plus pi k. So these, this fruit ninja technique, let me just summarize it here, and you should summarize it in your notes. Say that sine slices are consistent y values. y equals sine. And that cosine is consistent x values. x equals cos. And I wrote too big. And then lastly, that tangent equals slope. That slope is a way to talk about tangent on the unit circle. So I hope that this fruit ninja slice will be useful to you, that instead of having to think all about when is it there, you, you still need to know the unit circle, but rather than working about the whole thing, you can just sort of ask your first quadrant questions and then have a fruit ninja slice that helps you find the others, usually two others, two total. And this is kind of a way to solve trig equations in a consistent fashion. So I hope that helps. And I'll see you in class where we'll do easier stuff than this, just talking about radians.